Commencing transmission. Engaging scramblers. Proxy chain initialized. And now, live from this hidden base of the Earth's core, the future ruler of Earth, Doomcock. <laughs> Greetings. I am Dicta Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, and I come to you today completely fed up with the world. People ask me all the time, Overlord, why do you want to rule the Earth? Aside from personal rage at how most of the world as yet does not acknowledge my genius and bow down before me, as well as the enormous tax advantages, my answer is always to set things right, to reshape the world in my image, and so I can own stuff like Captain Kirk's chair and the Maltese Falcon. And to have your very own life-size Robbie the Robot, too. Exactly. The fact that I do not have a life-size Robbie the Robot fills me with a rage that surpasseth human understanding. I think it's easy to understand why you don't have one. At 50,000 buckaroos a pop, they're kind of expensive. It's not the cost that surpasseth human understanding. It's the fact that the world has not as yet placated me with a life-size Robbie that surpasseth human understanding. But oh, there shall be a reckoning for this affront. Oh, what the hell does surpasseth mean anyway? It's biblical for surpasses. Just sounds more badass when you sayeth it like that. But I digress. I must rule the world because the SJWs have brought things to an intolerable point. The point where everything is racist. Uh, everything? Yes, Harvey. Everything. Because I speak truly unto you, when SJWs can accuse peanuts of being racist, they can accuse anything of being racist. Uh, peanuts? Like Mr. Peanut? Is he racist now? Yeah, I can see it now. The monocle, the top hat, white gloves, elitist white privileged country club bastard. Even though he is kind of brown when you think about it, it's... No, a Harvey. Not the planter's mascot. I'm talking about Peanuts, the beloved cartoon strip by Charles M. Schultz. Apparently, a bunch of pinhead SJW creeps decided over the Thanksgiving holiday to accuse a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving of being racist. Uh, why, you mean this beloved family holiday tradition, a cartoon that millions the world over have watched with their parents and grandparents is suddenly racist? Egads! How are we fooled all these years? I know, right? I think we were thrown off by the fact that a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving cunningly included a black character named Franklin to throw us off the scent. Those racist SOBs! It's the Triple K, Charlie Brown! Jeez, you'd think you would kick the football real good after all that goose-stepping. So, uh, how did they abuse this cartoon kid of color? Was Franklin serving Charlie Brown and his Lily White pals their Thanksgiving turkey wearing a tux and white gloves? Uh, was he segregated from the rest of the white guests at his own separate but equal table? No, Harvey. No, he was seated at the table with everyone else just like all the other guests. Hmm. Did Whitey get served turkey and Franklin have to eat insulting stereotypical type foods that people of color are traditionally made fun of eating? Like what food, Harvey? Uh-uh. Uh-uh, fuck that. I'm powerful enough to destroy the universe, but I sure don't want the NAACP on my green ass. Pass on that one. I'm just asking if they serve Franklin cliché foods that people of color find condescending and insulting. Nope. Franklin eats the same food as everyone else. Then what the fuck, Dictor? Why is a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving racist? Because, Harvey, although Franklin is sitting at the same table as the rest of them, and was clearly invited to the party, and is clearly Charlie Brown's friend, turns out, see, Franklin is sitting on the opposite side of the table from the rest of the gang. Ah, I see. Hmm. No, I don't see. That's because you're sane! These idiotic SJWs, on the other hand, are not sane. They are idiots! They spend all their sad little lives just looking for a fence where none exists. In an article entitled The Charlie Brown Thanksgiving is Now Racist on DailyWire.com, writer Paul Boyce says, 
Another holiday classic has been slapped with the label racist by SJWs for supposedly marginalizing the token black character in a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. People on social media have expressed outrage over the fact that the lone black character Franklin in a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving appears seated differently juxtaposed to the white characters during the famous dinner scene where Charlie Brown serves popcorn and toast to his hungry guests instead of turkey and stuffing. From the Hill. The scene in question has four characters from Charles M. Schultz's iconic Peanuts cartoon, Sally, Charlie Brown, Peppermint Patty, and Dog Snoopy, sitting on one side of a makeshift outdoor table for Thanksgiving dinner, with Marcy at one end of the table and Linus at the head. The cartoon's lone black character, Franklin, is on his own side of the table, seated on a lawn chair. Comicbook.com was the first to flag the reactions to the scene on social media. And what were those reactions? Here are some of the tweets from the twits. How come Franklin, Charlie Brown's only black friend, sits alone on the other side of the table? And in a lawn chair, said another Twitter user. Am I woke now? Why is Franklin in Charlie Brown Thanksgiving sitting all by himself at the table? Man, things I did not notice as a child. One Twitter user said the scene was reminiscent of the film Get Out a story about rich white liberals who insert their brains into black people's bodies. Let's talk about Franklin. Dude gets invited to Charlie Brown's by Peppermint Patty. Then he finds out that it isn't a real invite. A dog is cooking the food and he's got to sit by himself at dinner. That's Get Out. The only problem is, he's not sitting alone, you cretin. He's sitting right there at the table. In fact, he's in the best spot because he can actually see everyone and converse with everyone. They're all facing him, which makes him an honored focus of attention. Sitting alone, you feckless fucktard. You obviously don't know what alone even means. Actually, think about it, Dictor. If anyone knows what alone means, it's this joyless turd. Who invites someone to their party who is going to find the birthday cake racist because it's vanilla? Who sees red traffic lights as affronts to Native Americans? Why use red in the connotation of stop, of danger? White should be stop, danger, warning, and red should be go, thumbs up, all is well. Anything else is an affront to Native Americans by that logic. Why do ambulances flash red lights and emit war whoops like charging Native Americans on horseback? The sirens on ambulances should go whitey, 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 whitey. Jesus, Harvey, what have you gone woke? Nah, I was just playing SJW's advocate. But you're right, Dictor. It seems like racism is everywhere if you only look for it. The part that puzzles me, though, is that jerk-off guy saying Franklin's invite wasn't real because he has to sit alone with all the others, and the dog is cooking the food. So was Snoopy just cooking the food for Franklin while Gordon Ramsay was preparing a repast for Charlie Brown's Lily White companions? Nope. Snoopy was cooking for everyone, regardless of race, creed, or sexuality. But dogs can't cook. Exactly, Harvey. Snoopy is cooking because it's a goddamn cartoon! It's not real! It's not meant to be realistic! It's for kids and families on Thanksgiving! So the dog cooking is supposed to be lighthearted and or a hallucination on Snoopy's part because he got into some of Scooby-Doo's Scooby Snacks. And never accept doggy treats off a stoner. Rules to live by. See, this is emblematic of why SJWs are so insufferable. They see offense where none was intended or exists. And the more ridiculous the imagined slight, the more obscure it is. The more virtue signaling they get credit for. Because all these morons are in a competition to see who is the most woke. See, if you can discover something so obscure and so utterly meaningless that it escaped offending anyone for years and years and years, how amazingly woke you must be. You're a god of pointless bitching. Bully for you, you joyless nabob of nothing. And so, because of this game of who's more woke, all of our past, all of our culture, all of our most beloved icons of the past are now fair game for a bunch of worthless bitches whose idea of fighting for social justice is sitting on their ass and tweeting. Whereas uh, Martin Luther King Jr. fought for civil rights by marching and activism, and the only time he sat on his ass fighting for civil rights was in jail. 
While these weekend warriors tweet out idiotic accusations from the comfort of their dorm rooms and squats and mommy's basement? Bingo, Harvey. And funny you mentioned the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, because get this. After the assassination of this civil rights warrior, Charles M. Schultz added Franklin to Peanuts because he thought it was high time that a black character was represented in Peanuts. And he got pushback from the newspaper syndicate for that decision. They pressed Schultz on it, and Schultz told them you either accept Franklin, or I'm done. Basically, he put his livelihood on the line for a principle he believed in. He put his money where his heart was, and that's the difference between a progressive and a worthless SJW. Guys like Schultz fought for their beliefs at a time when it was dangerous and could cost you your life. As opposed to the SJWs of today, who love to tweet out hate not to make the world better, but to shame others who actually fought for social justice just to prove how woke they are to their other SJW cretins. Imagine the gall. Christ. Well, it it can't get worse than that, at least. Ah, contraire, mon ver frère. It can get worse. And it is. Recently, the death of the late great Stan Lee, a man whose genius Doomcock revered and whose loss I still mourn, drove the SJW lunatic fringe into a feeding frenzy of fuck. In tweet after tweet, they crawled out of the woodwork like loathsome cockroaches at the scent of offal, spreading lies about Stan Lee and calling him everything under the sun, including racist. Stan Lee? You mean the Stan Lee that created the first black superhero, the Black Panther? And made the Black Panther civilization one of the most technologically advanced civilizations on Earth? That racist Stan Lee? Exactly, Harvey. Once again, we have these creepy little pastas of puerile puffery sitting on their lazy asses and passing judgment on a man who was in the thick of the fight for civil rights in the 60s. A man who put his career and his sales on the line by not only creating a black superhero, but by naming that black superhero after one of the most aggressive and controversial black rights groups in America at the time, the Black Panthers. That's how racist Stan Lee was, you whiny-ass little bitches. Look at some of what they said about Stan Lee. Y'all calling Stan Lee a legend as if he ain't a racist, homophobic, Man that had sexual misconduct allegations. Another idiot says, Stan Lee invented multitasking. He was racist, homophobic, and a sexual harasser. Now that he died, the curse that Peter Parker had to be white and straight is broken. Well, isn't that lovely? This reprehensible waste of humanity says, Fuck Stan Lee. Fuck him for being racist. Fuck him for being homophobic. Fuck him for being transphobic. Fuck him for sexually assaulting multiple people. Fuck Stan Lee. I wish him a faster than usual decomposition. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful example of a waste of humanity. This idiot says he was another white supremacist author who preached hatred. His books promoted white-only workspaces and to be frank was probably a white supremacist supporter. Fuck you. Fuck you, you fuck. Fucking asshole. And yet none of these couch warriors cites even one bit of evidence for supporting their uh, slanders. Not one single word. That's right. You don't need proof when you're virtue signaling. Lies get you laid by SJW whammon just as handily as facts. And these same SJW trash were banning or muting any replies that offered facts to the contrary. The main fact being a column Stan wrote in the thick of the fight, published in all his comics in Stan Lee's soapbox, influencing a whole generation of kids to make positive changes in the world. I now quote that soapbox Stan Lee wrote in its entirety. Let's lay it right on the line. Bigotry and racism are among the deadliest social ills plaguing the world today. But unlike a team of costume supervillains, they can't be halted with a punch in the snoot or a zap from a ray gun. The only way to destroy them is to expose them, to reveal them for the insidious evils they really are. The bigot is an unreasoning hater, one who hates blindly, fanatically, indiscriminately. 
If his hang-up is black men, he hates all black men. If a redhead once offended him, he hates all redheads. If some foreigner beat him to a job, he's down on all foreigners. He hates people he's never seen, people he's never known, with equal intensity, with equal venom. Now, we're not trying to say it's unreasonable for one human being to bug another. But, although anyone has the right to dislike another individual, it's totally irrational, patently insane to condemn an entire race, to despise an entire nation, to vilify an entire religion. Sooner or later we must learn to judge each other on our own merits. Sooner or later, if man is ever to be worthy of his destiny, we must fill our hearts with tolerance. For then, and only then, will we be truly worthy of the concept that man was created in the image of God, a God who calls us all his children. Pax et justitia. Wow. Sounds like a regular Eichmann to me. How clever Stan was, hiding his bigotry behind pleas for tolerance. Well played, Mr. Bond, well played. That devil, how dare he? Didn't he know you're just supposed to signal your virtue, not actually be virtuous? See, these SJW scum can find racism in everything that isn't perfect. What, because Stanley objected to Marvel turning Spider-Man into a Hispanic youth, he's a racist? Newsflash, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. That's how Stan wrote him, and he was a beloved character to Stan. The creator has the right to object to his creation being fundamentally altered. It had nothing to do with racism, it has to do with sanctity of canon. When you change a character, for whatever reason, that character is violated and the canon of that fictional universe is perverted. Same goes for turning the Black Panther into a white male, or Luke Cage into a Martian, or the Falcon into a woman. Doing that, for whatever reason, even to make the most valid political point, is to ruin the integrity of that character. If Stan Lee were racist, if the Black Panther was some kind of token gesture, then we wouldn't have subsequently had the Falcon and Luke Cage and all the other black characters in the Marvel Universe. These are facts. But these professional whiners are pretty much immune to facts. Your world has gone insane, Dictor. It will be a pleasure devouring it. You never will, Harvey, for I will rule the world and save it. But let that pass. The point is this. Racism was rampant in the past. It still exists today, but it is fading, ever fading. Change is never instantaneous. That's why those who fought racism in the 60s were heroes, because they were actually risking their careers and their lives fighting for civil rights. And to see these weepy, whiny wankers presuming to judge these civil rights pioneers from the comfort of their couches in between playing video games and swiping left on Tinder, well-fed and well-protected as they virtue signal away, risking nothing, fills me with a fury and loathing that I simply cannot find words in the English language to express. Incremental change is always the hardest change. To slam peanuts because of where Franklin was sitting when Franklin was an act of courage unparalleled in comic strips at the time. To call Stanley a racist because the majority of his characters were white at a time when all characters were white. And to slander the great Gene Roddenberry because Uhura didn't have a lot to do on the bridge is madness that even the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King himself rebuked. That's right. At one point, Nichelle Nichols was going to quit Star Trek because she was fed up, having nothing to do but opening hailing frequencies, but uh, Dr. King personally talked her out of it, right? Yes. He told her personally in a face-to-face -face meeting that she couldn't quit, that just seeing her on that screen as a respected, competent officer and a member of the crew was vital. She was doing important work in the turbulent 60s just by being seen. And Roddenberry was taking a bold step in including her on his show. Indeed, he also later had a black doctor on the show and a black crewman on the Galileo 7 episode, including people of color at every chance he could in a time when doing so was risky. He even had the first interracial kiss on television, a move that resulted in severe threats and repercussions from southern stations. Star Trek racist? Hard to believe, 
and yet a swarm of SJWs was attacking Shatner on Twitter with just that claim not six months ago, and it made me furious. If Shatner hadn't blocked me on Twitter for reasons that surpasseth human understanding, I'd have been defending him, but that's neither here nor there. The point is this. When the works of great civil rights warriors of the past are attacked for not being woke enough, then everything is racist. Nothing can ever be good enough for these phony SJWs. And so Doomcock rebukes them. Doomcock calls them pathetic phonies and prattling posers. They pretend to be making valid points, but they're only in love with their own voices, tweeting impotently from their couches, accusing great men of the past who created marvels when they themselves will never create anything except scandals and phony discord. If you have an attention span limited to seven seconds, kindly shut the fuck up about things it takes more than seven seconds to comprehend. In their day, these people were fighting in their own way for their beliefs to the very best of their abilities. They made what small changes they could, but those changes have echoed through time, amplifying each and every year. To not recognize that, is to display an ignorance that is appalling, and rest assured, when you attack Charles Schultz and San Lee and Gene Roddenberry, you're disgracing no one but yourselves. Those who do not know history are doomed to be assholes. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock commanding you all, stay angry. Ha, 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 ha,